Hello everyone, welcome to Travel Time. Today we will take you to Zion National Park. But before we start a tour, I have a huge favor to ask you. If you like our channel and want us to continue posting content like this, hit the subscribe button to let us know that our travel videos are helpful. Leave us a comment too. We'd love to hear from you. Zion National Park Located in southwest Utah, this breathtaking park is known for its steep red cliffs, beautiful scenery, meandering trails, and some pretty intense hikes. You can take a relaxing stroll along the Parus Trail, or if you're ready for some adrenaline rush at Zion National Park, you can find the dangerously famous Angel's Landing. You can also challenge the Narrows as you hike up the Virgin River or go even further and hike the extreme subway area of the park. So if you are ready to learn about this beautiful national park, whether you are new to our channel or a returning guest, please take your notepads out because we are about to share everything that we know about Zion National Park. There is a saying that the best things in life come in threes. Well, Zion National Park follows suit. The park is divided into three different sections. The main canyon, Kolob Canyons, and Kolob Terrace. We will be starting our trip from the town of Springdale. At the entrance gate, we will follow the main area of the park, called Main Canyon, with its north and east areas. Both areas of the Main Canyon are accessible via the south entrance of the park. We will follow to the Kolob Canyons and finish our trip with the Kolob Terrace. But stay tuned to the end of the video if you're debating about the best time to visit the park because I will share some information on that as well at the end of our video. The first thing you will see when you enter the park gates will be the shuttle stop number one, the Zion Canyon Visitor Center, located just inside the south entrance of the park. Visitors are encouraged to stop, to get a map, and also learn how to visit the park with minimum impact on the fragile environment. You'll find the first shuttle stop and the parking lot at the visitor center. It's highly advisable that you arrive before 7 a.m. to find a spot in this parking lot. If you don't find a spot at the visitor center, there's extra parking at the town of Springdale and shuttles to take you to the Zion Canyon Visitor Center from the town. Located one half mile north of the Zion Canyon Visitor Center at the park's south entrance is the Zion Human History Museum exhibiting a permanent display on the history of Zion National Park, as well as temporary exhibits. Still at the visitor center area, you will find the trailheads to two hikes, the Parus Trail, a paved three and a half miles that follow the Virgin River. This trail is wheelchair accessible, bike accessible, and the only pet friendly trail in the whole park. There's also the Watchman Trail, a 3.3 moderate hike. This trail receives full sun, so if you attempt this trail in the summer, wear a hat, plan the hiking time accordingly, bring lots of water. Once you leave the Zion Canyon Visitor Center, your shuttle will take you north along the Zion Canyon Scenic Drive. This is where you will find the most famous hikes. For the most part of the year, this road is serviced by shuttle buses only, and the road is closed for private vehicles. If you don't take the shuttle and decide to go east, the Zion Mount Carmel Highway leads you towards the east entrance of the park, the entrance that has the Zion National Park sign, a famous picture spot. We will talk about this area further in the video. Once you pass the Canyon Junction and enter the north side of the park, you will be at the Zion Canyon Scenic Drive. At stop 4, you will be at the Court of Patriarchs. A short walk from the shuttle stop allows for amazing views of the three patriarchs watching over Zion Canyon. These peaks were named for the Bibles Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The trailhead to the Sand Bench Trail is across the shuttle stop. This moderate 
three and a half mile loop is also a horse trail from spring to fall. At stop five, you will arrive at the Zion Lodge, the only lodging located within the park boundaries. This hotel has been a part of Zion since the 1920s. The Zion Lodge has a restaurant called Red Rock Grill with indoor and outdoor seating. Another place to grab a quick snack is at the Castle Dome Cafe, also located in the Zion Lodge. Across from the Zion Lodge, you will have access to the Emerald Pools, a beautiful desert oasis separated by lush foliage, waterfalls and red rock monoliths. The Lower Emerald Pool is an easy 1.2 mile hike that passes along a rock overhang and leads you along the mist of the waterfall. The trip to the first pool is kid-friendly and an easy pace. Also at the stop, there are three moderate trails, a 2.2 mile hike called Middle Emerald Pool, a one mile hike called Upper Emerald Pool, and the alternative trailhead for the 7.6 mile Sand Bench Trail that can also be assessed from the previous shuttle stop. Shuttle stop six, the grotto. Here you will find the easy one mile grotto trail, a flat walk connecting you from the Zion Lodge to the grotto area of the park. Also in this area, the moderate Cayenta Trail is a two mile unpaved path connecting you from the grotto to the Emerald Pools area. Many trails leave from here, for example, the strenuous Angels Landing via West Rim Trail starts at this bus stop. The Angels Landing Trail is a 5.4 trail that ascends 1500 feet. At this trail, you will hike along a section of the West Rim Trail. You will pass the refrigerated canyon area, Walter's Wiggle switchbacks, and arrive at the Scouts Lookout, the final area before you continue to the Chains section of the Angels Landing hike. Shuttle Stop 7 is the area of the Weeping Rock. This interesting rock formation received its name because the water dripping down the sandstone rock resembles tears. This feature creates beautiful hanging gardens. Unfortunately, the trailheads leaving from this area are closed, and they are the Hidden Canyon Trail, the Whipping Rock Trail, and the Observation Point via West Rim via East Mesa Trail. The Observation Point is an area directly across from the Angels Landing Summit. There's still a way to access this viewing area via the East Mesa Trail access off a of fur road on the east side of the park. More information on that later in the video when we talk about the east side of the park. Stop 8 is called Big Bend. If you're not pressed for time, you can walk down to the river for beautiful views. In the fall, the leaves of the cottonwoods create a pop of brilliant yellow along the area. Now the final stop at this section of the park is Stop 9, Temple of Sinawava. Named to honor Sinawava, the Paiute coyote god or spirit. This stop, you can enjoy a lovely stroll along the paved 2.2 miles river walk trail, a path accessible for the first half mile. Or you can challenge the Narrows, a strenuous 9.4 mile up the Virgin River through a canyon that requires special gear, hiking experience and endurance. The Narrows Hike Trailhead is at the end of the river walk. If you decide to hike this trail, you will need to be aware of any flash flood warnings. Also, I recommend wearing water-resistant shoes. There is a rental place called Zion Outfitters at the entrance of the park where you can rent water hiking shoes, waders, and a walking stick. There are also other gear rental places in the town of Springdale. Since I'm in California and this time I made a road trip to the park, I brought my gear from home, such as walking sticks, a waterproof backpack, and neoprene socks to wear inside my water shoes. But it's also a great idea to rent the gear, which I have done on previous trips. I highly advise using a walking stick, since this hike is up the river and the rushing water can make you lose your footing. 
Also bring waterproof bags for your belongings, especially the electronics. If you would like me to post a video about the gear I pack for my trips, please leave me a comment and I will try to add a packing video in the future. Zion National Park also has an east entrance where you can view beautiful rock formations and access the park through the Zion Mount Carmel Highway. If you're coming from the Canyon Junction intersection, right before you enter the tunnel, you can see the Great Arch. This rock formation is, in reality, a blind arch or the formation of an arch. There is a tunnel on this road, so if you're driving a large vehicle, you will have to contact the park to schedule a one-way traffic control so you can drive through the center of the tunnel. Along this road, once you pass the tunnel, you will also find the trailhead to the Canyon Overlook Trail, a moderate one-mile-long hike that brings you to the Lower Zion Canyon Overlook. The parking lot at this trail is small, and parking is also limited along the Zion Mount Carmel Highway. As you keep going along this road, you can view the Checkerboard Mesa, a sandstone summit characterized by vertical and horizontal cracks on its surface. The distinct appearance has made this a highly photographed section of the east side of the park. There is a lookout and a pullout area if you would like to stop and take a picture of this unique area of the park. As I mentioned previously in this video, you can access the Observation Point Trail from two different trailheads on the east side of the park. One trail is ranked moderate, and the other one is a strenuous trail. Observation Point via East Mesa Trail is a moderate slash challenging 7-mile hike. If you're worried about parking and decide to hike this trail from the East Mesa Access Point, there is a paid shuttle leaving the Zion Ponderosa Resort the other access trail to the observation point is a much more challenging hike. It is called Observation Point via Stave Spring Trailhead, and it is a 9.2 hard hike. You should download the map of the trail ahead of time and bring lots of water. Another area at Zion National Park is called Kolob Canyons, located in the northwest section of the park. The entrance to this area is off of Interstate 15 via Exit 40. Once you pass the Kolob Canyon Visitor Center, you can take a 5-mile scenic drive to the viewpoint at the end of Kolob Canyon's road. At Kolob Canyon's viewpoint, visitors can view the majestic Crimson Canyons and Peaks. If you would like to include a hike, this area allows access to three hiking trails. The shortest hiking trail is a 1-mile long hike called Timber Creek Overlook Trail. There's also the Taylor Creek Trail and the Kolob Arch via Laverkin Creek Trail. While this area only requires a small amount of time depending on what you want to visit, this is a must-stop area if you have an extra day at Zion National Park. Now something to keep in mind, the Kolob Canyon Road may be closed during the winter months due to snow or ice, so if you want to visit this area of the park during this time of the year, make sure you do some research before driving all the way to this area. Now last but not least, there is Kolob Terrace where you can find the iconic Subway Slot Canyon. This section of the park is assessed from Highway 9 via Kolob Terrace Road. The drive along this area is beautiful, however, the trails are advanced and require some wayfinding experience, canyoneering, and a lot of pre-planning. To have access to this area, you will need a permit. Now, the usual question, when is the best time to visit Zion National Park? We don't know when is the best time to visit the park for sure, but I can give you some information to help you make the best decision. Springtime at Zion is beautiful, but in March, April, and May, it's an unpredictable place in regards to weather. Warm, sunny weather is the norm at about 90 degrees at the warmest, but this time can get very rainy. The temperatures vary with elevation and time of day with a temperature difference of 30 degrees. The wet weather peaks in March and the snow melt and high water level lasts until May. So you have to be very aware of flash floods and it's highly advisable that you dress in layers. In the summer months, Zion's temperature can reach 100 degrees, 
From July to September, it is a rainy season and visitors can get surprised with thunderstorms, lightning and sudden heavy rain. Bring clothes for all kinds of weather conditions and check the weather for flash floods since they can develop fast from even a small amount of precipitation. In my opinion, fall is the best time to visit the park. Temperatures cool down, the rain season passes, the cottonwoods turn golden. Do I have to say more? It's a great time to visit the park, but as always, you have to be aware of the weather and the development of flash flood. Make sure to wear layers, bring insulated gear if you're planning to be outdoors for an extended period of time. Now, winter season. You know for sure the weather will be cold, the night temperature will dip below freezing level and some areas of the park can be closed depending on the conditions. Also, there could be rain, it could be quite regular, and at the end of the winter you have to watch out for the snow accumulated in the upper elevations that can melt quickly and bring, you guessed it, a flash flood down to the valley floor, making the river current a little bit more powerful and the danger of flash flood itself. So regardless of what time you visit the Zion National Park, you do have to be aware of flash floods, only that sometimes it is less a current and sometimes it is something that will happen all the time. You have to be very savvy about it, talk to the park rangers and make sure that you are safe. I hope you enjoyed the information I shared with you and I hope you liked our video about the majestic Zion National Park. Please leave us a comment to let us know what you thought of the video and also if you want to help our channel a lot, subscribe to our channel, ask all your family and friends to subscribe to our channel. All right, guys, so I'll see you on our next adventure. Thanks for watching. Travel time.